I've made videos talking about how baseball card hobbyists are the smartest. It's the most mature segment of the hobby. They actually use stats and analysis to make purchasing decisions based on a player's greatness and not just style and hype. But Paul Skeens and that crowd, they have officially lost their minds. I can't believe what we're witnessing. We need to date it up. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Data Dive, powered by Market Movers. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, and this week I'm here to tell you why the Paul Skeens fanatics have lost their minds, and they're going to lose their money too. As always, this video is brought to you by Market Movers. Use our sales history tool to check the price of any card with data from nine different leading marketplaces. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use promo code DIVE when you check out, and you'll get 14 days completely free to try it out and then 20% off for life as long as you're subscribed. Now let's get into the data. All right, so we're gonna exclusively use our sales history tool and market movers today. We're gonna to go through some different players and I'm starting out with this sale from Golden Auction. First of all, congratulations to the seller. You just fleeced somebody. You just fleeced the baseball card market because this sale of $80,000, 80,500 to be exact on Golden is absolutely insane for any pitcher who hasn't done anything. Now Skeens, if you don't know, he's he was the number one pitching prospect, one of the top prospects, I think the number two prospect overall in baseball, and he got called up to the Pirates. He pitched last year in college at LSU. He was completely dominant. He was dominant in AAA and striking out like 2.1 batters per, you know, per inning. He's been called up to to the majors. He's pitched pretty well aside from, you know, his first outing which he kind of gave up some late runs. The relief pitchers came in and gave up some runs. But this sale's crazy. And we're gonna go through and unpack exactly why. And if you know me, you know I like to talk about perspective. Perspective is everything. You've gotta know the nature of the markets. You've gotta know the nature of the world that we live in. And to pay $80,500 for a pitching prospect who just came up, especially when we're seeing pitchers dropping left and right like flies with arm injuries, with Tommy John after Tommy John after Tommy John. You just saw Spencer Strider go down. We've, we've seen pretty much every top pitcher, it feels like, go down with injuries within the last two years and have to miss extended time, sometimes even a year or more, to come back from those injuries. This guy is out there. He's big. He's strong. He seems to have pretty good arm mechanics. But can he avoid the pitching injury plague that is devastating everyone who goes out there and touches 100, 101, 104 and throws an absolutely you know filthy breaking ball that alone is way too much risk to warrant the $80,500. So I don't know if this is people who are trying to live vicariously through Paul Skeens because of who his girlfriend is or because they really think that when it's all said and done, Paul Skeens is going to be not just the greatest pitcher of this generation, but literally would have to be the greatest pitcher of all time, would have to be considered one of the greatest baseball players of all time. And by the way, he plays for the Pittsburgh Pirates, who nobody cares about. Nobody cares about the Pirates. They don't take care of their pitchers. They trade them off like Tyler Glasnow and Chris Archer and other guys. It's the Pirates. So this guy's fun to watch. I have him on my fantasy team. I was smart enough to scoop him late in the fantasy draft and tuck him away in the NA slot on Yahoo until he got called up. And I'm happy I did that. But we're going to see that Paul Skeen's sales, it's not just the Super Fractor. It's several other sales. Are, are basically at the top of the list for pitchers, not named Clayton Kershaw, of all active pitchers. So let's look at that. Here's what I did. I spent a long time, a long time, painstakingly going through this sales history page and one by one excluding every other player who wasn't a pitcher from this data set so that we could look at this. And you can see the string here. So I put in Bowman. Then I concatenated in parentheses all these different years going back to 2000. And then I put all these players' names in here. And if I show you this, I'm gonna scroll. Hopefully you can see this okay. If you're watching it on your phone, you might, but it just goes right, 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 right. And this goes way over, way over. So thankfully on Market Movers, by the way, on sales history, you're able to put in an unlimited number of characters into that string, unlike eBay where you're limited to 300 when you try to type things in on their website. So that's enough yakking about that. I'm gonna be honest. I did not know before I started doing the research for this video that this sale had even ever happened. Jacob deGrom on Heritage Auctions, this card apparently sold for $156,000 back in 2021. Now we know sports cards were insane back in 2021. 
everything was two, three, 10 X what it normally would sell for. And DeGrom was hot. He was untouchable. He was healthy. He was dealing. And he was looking like a future Hall of Famer if he was going to be able to stay healthy. But guess what? He hasn't been able to do that. He hasn't been able to stay healthy. His arm keeps going out. He's had problems and he's not pitching again. He's one of the nastiest pitchers we've ever seen. Truly, if you if you were to stack up the most untouchable hitters or un untouchable pitchers when they're pitching healthy and they have their stuff working, Jacob deGrom's in the top five all time, all time. And I would argue that till the cows come home but he hasn't been able to pitch. He hasn't been healthy. So let's close that. The next highest sale. Now, this isn't quite right, because right here it shows Paul Skeen's golden auction, $80,500. There is one other sale of Clayton Kershaw that we don't have in our data in here. It's from 2021, it's from Golden. We have their data basically going back to their new marketplace. If you don't know, they changed their marketplace to golden.co. This is their old website, but this Clayton Kershaw card, if I scroll down to the bottom, sold for $85,200 at 22 bids. And this card uh, sold a while back. Where's the date? Uh, the date was on here. I think this was like three years ago, 2021. Uh, so that card technically would be the second highest modern pitcher sale of any pitcher. And it's Clayton Kershaw. He's one of the greatest of all time. He's one of the three greatest of this generation. I would say with Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. So he's second and then Paul Skeens. And then we start scrolling down the list. Here's another Kershaw that sold in 2019. Here's Justin Verlander, $26,000, 26,000. So the highest Justin Verlander sale of all time, and it's the number to five, just as the Kershaw is numbered to five, is 26,400. After everything that he's done, surefire, first ballot, Hall of Famer, maybe one of the last of his kind in terms of his ability to go nine innings, pitch a complete game, you know, shutouts, no hitters, you name it, Cy Young Awards, just like Kershaw, and yet you have Paul Skeens here at $80,500. So let's keep scrolling down. And basically what I did was I ex extended this to 80 transactions to get all pitchers in here. The next one, ouch, Steven Strasburg. You know what, Steven Strasburg was the nastiest pitcher, and now people are saying, oh, Paul Skeens is the nastiest pitcher that we've seen since Steven Strasburg. Well, that didn't work out very well. For Steven Strasburg investors, for Dynasty League fantasy people, and it definitely didn't work out well for the Nationals or for Steven Strasburg, except insofar as he's being paid. So that card sold for $20,000 on Huggins and Scott. That was all the way back in 2010. So yes, we have data going back quite a ways on many of these marketplaces. Here's Kershaw again. Next up, oh, it's Paul Skeens. So what is that though? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ninth most expensive pitcher card sale, non-vintage pitcher card sale of all time. It's also Paul Skeens, the Pod Paracha, uh Sapphire, Bowman Draft Sapphire Auto, sold for $15,000 at the beginning of May, also on Golden. Kershaw, there he is again. This card apparently sold two weeks later. Uh, this is the non-auto, and it sold for only a little less than the auto. Kind of surprising, to be honest, to see that card sell for almost the same uh, two weeks later, but that's the Skeens hype wagon right now. Kershaw, Kershaw, Skeens, Kershaw, Kershaw. All the way down, we're seeing Clayton Kershaw. Keep going down. Here's another Paul Skeens. His red auto to five, $9,000. So what we're not seeing are any of the other notable prospects until we finally get here. By the way, this is an insert. This is the uh, red refractor Bowman. I think this is the glass insert. You, you can see here, glass, autographs, red, sticker auto, $7,880. And then we get to Grayson Rodriguez, okay? This sales back from 2022, and guess what? Grayson Rodriguez, injuries. Uh, so, you know, that guy, he comes up, he's starting to pitch well, he gets injured. That was from 2022, and he was kind of the next can't-miss pitching prospect. Here's Yamamoto, who, uh, you know, frankly, has been not as advertised, let's say. He's been, uh, he's been not as advertised. He's been okay, but not as good as, as people had expected him to be right away. Here's another Skeens. Here's more Kershaw. Scrolling down near the bottom of the list, more Skeens. So there's a theme here, right? I'm trying to demonstrate all this, more Skeens. It's basically Skeens and Kershaw. All of these sales, Skeens and Kershaw. Uh, looks like I abs accidentally left a batter or two in here. I knew I would. I went through this list like nine times. We finally get here to Max Scherzer to Max Scherzer. So we saw some Verlander, we saw some Kershaw. 
Now we get to Max Scherzer, number to five, pop one, uh, pop two, none higher. Okay, it's you know it's number to five, uh, but this is uh, his PSA nine, and this is an auto that sold for five thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars just two months ago here in twenty twenty four. Andrew Abbott, if you know him, son of the famous Jim Abbott, he made his debut and didn't do particularly well. Uh, this card sold a year ago for five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. And then we're at the bottom and we close it out with more Kershaw and Paul Skeens. So let's shift and keep getting that perspective, layering it in. This has got to sink in. This has got to sink in for all of you. I know none of you watching these videos are the ones paying $80,500 or even $10,000 or $5,000 for Paul Skeens cards. Please tell me you're not doing that. So let's jump over. We saw the Kershaw, the $80,000 uh, that happened on gold. And what was it? $80,000. Yeah, $85,200. <clears> so the next one was also a red. And we just looked at all of those. I'm not going to waste your time looking through all these, but you can see this isn't just Bowman. This is other transactions as well. So this is all Kershaw cards that have sold in our sales history database, <clears throat> nine different marketplaces that we're tracking. And you can see, you know, most of these cards, here's a flagship black. That's an interesting sale from a little under a year ago on my slabs. PSA eight sold for almost 10 K. That's pretty high sale for that card. If I'm being honest, what about my guy? Justin Verlander. Let's switch gears and look at him. You can see 26,000 and then the next closest 9,000, 4,000, 4,000. You can get into Verlander cards very cheap. Look at this. This card is the type of card that you may have wanted to purchase. 2005 Bowman Chrome, Justin Verlander first. PSA 8, numbered to 50, $3,600. $3,600. Compare that to what those skeins are going for. Or how about this red X-Fractor Auto? Beautiful card. What numbered one of 25, $3,500. Let's jump over to Mad Max, the guy with two colored eyes, uh, two different color eyes. You know what I'm saying. This one, I can't wrap my head around this. I don't know if this was like a, a fake sale or bad data in the integration that we had with Heritage, Heritage Auctions, but I went out to their site. I don't understand this. Uh, 2008, this looks like a base paper card. It's like pop 1600, 1650, something like that. Apparently sold for $6,000 as the most expensive Max Scherzer sale of all time in 2021. Yes, base cards were crazy, but this sale just, it doesn't make any sense. So let's throw that one out. Here's that red refractor. This is actually low population. So to have sold in 2022, this is his refractor. And this is actually like pop 35 or something like that in PSA 10 condition. So little more plausible. This one was weird. There's some weird stuff going on with Max Scherzer sales. Like when I look at it, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. And he doesn't have the same type of cards, I guess, you know, that everybody else is that we're seeing. So this one's a nice card. This is his rookie, his Bowman uh, Chrome draft gold refractor rookie. This one sold in PSA nine for $1,500 uh, last September. So that's Mad Max. What if we look at the modern active players? And how do we filter that list down? Well, what I did, this is not perfect, and war definitely isn't perfect for pitchers, but I'm looking at the war leaders from the last five years. So from 2020 to 2024, and if you don't have a stat head subscription, go get it. I'm not sponsored by them, but I use this all the time. We've got a bunch of different guys here. Zach Wheeler leading the charge from Dallas, Georgia, by the way, right up the road. Uh, Garrett Cole, Max Fried, Corbin Burns, Scherzer, Alcantara, uh, Zach Gallen, Logan Webb. So let's look at their card price. Let's see if these guys have had any massive sales that even sniff anywhere in the ballpark of Paul Skeens. Well, Zach Wheeler, no. Nope, not Zach Wheeler. Cy Young, Cy Young leader right now in the NL probably uh, for the dominant Phillies. $2,760, most expensive sale in March of 2023 on Golden. And this card apparently sold twice last year. Somebody lost $500 on this card uh, by selling it some nine months later. But same card here, sold on Golden, then sold on eBay. Really nice card, Super Fractor. This was really interesting to me. Uh, this is a great looking card, just an awesome design. I love that design from uh, 2013. This is Super Fractor 1 of 1, 1 1.5K. That's his rookie card. And then if I scroll down, I just missed it here. This is his Bowman, uh, Bowman rookie. Uh, Bowman Draft Rookie Super Fractor. This one sold for 500, which actually seems like a pretty reasonable price to me. What do you think Paul Skeen's Super Fractor Rookie Card is going to sell for? If he comes out in Tops Update this year, if Paul Skeen's Rookie Card is in Tops Update, Tops Chrome Update, his Super Fractor. What do you think it's going to sell for? More than 10x 
it's gonna sell for it's gonna sell for twenty thousand, thirty thousand, some kind of crazy number, uh, way more than this card for Zach Wheeler, who leads the major leagues in WAR pitching over the last five years, and who is a Cy Young front runner right now on a really good team. Let's keep going. Garrett Cole, injuries, injuries. Uh, my buddies Chris and Jeff from the Spitball and Cards podcast blabbing about slabbing. They were high on Cole before the season. They got into some Cole cards. They thought this is the only guy right now who's active, who seems like he's on a Hall, of, a Hall of Fame trajectory, clearly. And then he gets hurt. Imagine if the Yankees had Cole pitching in Cy Young form right now. Oh man, that's kind of a that's kind of the Yankees curse, I feel like. So this card, 4,100, 3,700, 2,900, nothing even coming remotely close whatsoever to Paul Skeen's cards. Let's keep going. Max Freed. Love Mad Max, Mac, not Mad, he's not Mad Max. I'll call him Mad Max, but he is Max Freed. 1100 for a definitive, 750 for this beautiful red wave refractor. That's a nice looking card. Uh, and then here's his uh, orange refractor number to 25. This card sold for just $700 here in May, $700. He's a really good pitcher. He's really good. I think he just had a career high with like 13 strikeouts, something like that, 12 maybe. Corbin Burns, another guy who is uh, playing for the Orioles, made a change of scenery from the Brewers to the Orioles, $1,700. This was a lot, so ignore that. $1,750, that's the most expensive Corbin Burns cards. That was back in 2021 at the peak, at the absolute peak. Sandy Alcantara, who we know is injured, but he's still, believe it or not, leading the, leading the charge with war among these guys. $650, his most expensive card. Then we'll switch gears to Zach Gallen, who's also pitching fantastically. $1,500 for his Platinum one of one. So Platinum, Tops. I don't, I don't think anybody from Tops watches my videos, but if you do, can we get rid of the Platinum one of one or can we make it nicer? Can we make it look significantly nicer? Can we do something to spruce up this card? Because it doesn't look like a one of one. It doesn't look nice. I think there's something we could do to make those cards look a lot better. $1,500, $1,400, $1,400 for Zach Gallen. People showing him some love compared to some of these other guys we're looking at. $530 for Logan Webb, most expensive sale. And then Luis Castillo, $550. And actually, if you want to look at a rookie card, you have to come down here, $400 for his Super Fractor Topps Chrome Update uh, Super Fractor Sticker Auto 1 of 1. All right, let's close it out. And I'm actually going to look at the top, some of the top pitching prospects now. So Paul Skeens was the number one pitching prospect. He's in the pros now. So next on that list is a guy I'm very hopeful for, very high on, Jackson Job, and I'm high on him because he's in my Detroit Tigers farm system. His one of one, not the Super Fractor, not the Super Fractor, his one of one Black Wave Refractor, uh, which, you know, should that be a thing, we can argue that, but nice, really nice looking card, honestly, really, really nice looking card. One of one, PSA 10, auto, by the way, that Skeens was a PSA 7, $3,000, $3,000, Eighty thousand five hundred. This guy's now the number one prospect, and he's arguably just as dangerous and filthy as Skeens. We'll see. We'll see. He's already unfortunately had some injury concerns, uh, some strains and things of that nature. Cade Horton's high on the list. Sixteen hundred dollars is his highest uh, sale so far. Uh, Andrew Painter, two thousand dollars is his high, highest sale so far. He's high on the list. Uh, Jacob, I don't even. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how to say this. M Ms. Mizorowski, Mizorowski, Miss Zorowski. I don't know. One thousand dollars is what that card sold for. Somebody likes him a lot. Robbie Snelling, nine hundred and fifty dollars, and last uh, Ricky Tiedemann, one thousand two hundred dollars last April uh, for the True Gold PSA ten. So, what do we make of all this? Perspective, perspective, perspective. Keep perspective. Don't get caught up in, you know, whether you wish you were dating Livy Dunn or you had Paul Skeen's arm and talent. It doesn't matter. Don't pay that much money for his cards because if history tells us anything, first of all, these are completely unprecedented sales. And second, the hobby does not value pitchers long term. Third, they have massive injury risk. Fourth, he's playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Fifth, there's no guarantee he's actually going to be good long term. But I want to know what you think. Is there any planet in this multiverse where these skein sales pay off for the buyers? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, while you're down there, do me a huge favor, like this video, make sure to subscribe, share it with a friend. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, happy investing, keep on collecting, and make sure to have fun.